Okay, hello, and welcome to this eSchool News webinar, Safe and Sound, Systematic Communication Strategies for Ensuring School Safety. My name is Kevin Hogan. I am the Editor-at-Large for eSchool News, and I am happy you are joining us today for what I know will be a very insightful and important conversation. This event is brought to you by Galaxy Next Generation. Galaxy is a provider of interactive learning technology solutions and manufacturer of school communication products. These products include Galaxy's own private label interactive touchscreen panels, as well as classroom audio solutions, a cloud-based bell, paging and intercom system, and G2 Secure, an emergency communication platform. The company's robust intellectual property includes two patents, which support unique features within the G2 Link Classroom Audio Solution and G2 Communicator, the intercom solution. Galaxy's products all work in tandem to support one interactive, collaborative, and safe environment to increase student engagement, student achievement, and equity in learning. Now, before we get to our conversation, I'd like to take a minute to go over some of the features of the platform that we're using for this webinar. This event is being recorded, so you don't have to worry about missing a thing. Within a few days, you'll receive an email uh, that contains a link to the recorded webinar, along with a PDF of the slides. If you have a question or comment for the panelists, be sure to use the chat function uh, by launching on that. Feel free to use this uh, to also contact folks from eSchool News team if you have a technical question, but I really encourage any questions or comments or best practices you may wanna share with, with our panel uh, in the course of the conversation, as I really think it helps uh, drive along and get the most insights out of it. So with these housekeeping items out of the way, let's get started with our conversation and some introductions. First, we have Todd Eddy. Uh, Todd is with Galaxy Next Generation. He's a senior sales leader there with proven results in selling and managing national value-added integration teams and global manufacturing teams and not only pro-AV, UC IT products, but also IT software and digital curriculum. Also with us, Brent Thrasher. Brent is an instructional technology coordinator and coach at Overton County Schools in Tennessee. Uh, he is passionate about helping others find ways that technology can empower them to achieve their goals. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Brent's kind of really uh, day by day experience with not only using Galaxy, but what it means to be uh, uh, a director of technology these days uh, in schools considering these circumstances. Because, you know, when every second counts, there is no higher priority for school district leaders than to create a secure and informed campus environment. Having a campus-wide communication ecosystem is imperative. Being able to initiate a controlled emergency notification protocol to alert, notify, and monitor directly from a mobile device or classroom audio system or interactive flat panel is, is essential. Uh, you know, and these sort of technologies have been in schools uh, for decades, um, you know, notification systems, but because of not only just, you know, the advancement of technologies in general, but also as we've seen over these past couple of years with the pandemic, uh, new needs arising. Uh, and also, unfortunately, it seems uh, more sophisticated responses uh, are necessary in order to try to keep campuses as safe as possible. So, Todd, Brent, thank you so much for taking time to, to share your insights here. Maybe we start with Todd. Maybe you can talk a little bit about, I know you've had an extensive career when it comes to implementing systems in schools and working with various types of technologies. What is it about uh, Galaxy's technology and communication systems in general uh, that is different now than maybe even just a, just a few years ago? Yeah, thank you. I, I think the main uh, difference between a few years ago and now is really the element of global communication in the essence that most of the systems uh, traditionally and the ones that we're looking to kind of evolve um, into were, we'll say, closed loop systems, analog solutions that were really derived on that single uh, location to be able to communicate internally with the classes in the school on that single premise. And uh, now in the digital age, um, the communication has really transcended far beyond daily announcements and general internal dialogue and even voice lift with you know, amplification in the classroom. 
um, to really be part of a life-saving, you know, uh, capability that's needed in the essence to protect student staff and to make sure that the learning, uh, you know, is going seamless without having to worry about it, but understanding that the technology is just there at the tap of a button to be able to have communication in real time with emergency contacts outside of the school presence, uh, be able to communicate and bring, you know, the awareness that a situation is happening and uh, to really have the availability to be scalable to incorporate all these solutions, maybe not at one time, to really be cognizant of what the budget may be for a district like Brent has, to implement maybe one system and know that that system's future-proof um, for other systems. So the technology has really evolved in that essence, where it's not just one product, and then the product works for a couple of years, and then you'd have to replace it with the next product. Our products, in the essence, are really derived to uh, you know, be scalable, flexible, and evolve. So as the needs evolve um, and the technology uh, needs to be implemented with different types of security protocols or instructional learning type applications, they can really scale up um, you know, with those solutions. So scalability in general in ed tech is something that's a key element because the systems really need to be not a one size fits all but have the products that you can really uh, sell as a solution that fit the budget needs. And obviously, you know, kind of the pedagogy and the, the teaching learning environment and security needs of, you know, uh, the educational foundation that you're working with. And Brett will know first and foremost, better than I am. I work on the, the sales side. And like you said, I've worked for value-added resellers and manufacturers, um, but, you know, he's in the, the trenches, you know, managing the technology from a day-to-day -day perspective. Um, so he'd be first and foremost to really talk about the ecosystems that are needed and you know, probably what they have on their roadmap. Yeah, Brent, give us a little bit of a, a state of play of, of Overton where you are, maybe even a little bit of background on the, on the, the size of the district and um, talk about where you are in that, that, that uh, space that Todd was just talking about. Yeah, so <clears throat> um, we are um, uh, kind of you know, a rural area. Um, Kind of a smaller school district. Uh, we have about 3,000 students in our district and seven seven schools. Um, we, you know, we're looking into the uh, classroom audio uh, just as kind of um, a way to further enhance. You know, of course, with a, a lot of the um, funds that we've received um, through you know the ESSER funds, we've really tackled a lot of the one-to-one -one initiative and and the um, you know projectors having that technology in the classroom interactive panels and so forth um, but you know we were thinking how do we take that a step further to have a more well-rounded experience for our students um, and in you know, audio was one of those areas and and that's where we uh, looked at the g2 link um, to provide that whole class audio and um, <clears throat> we decided to uh, focus this in in our um, kindergarten through fourth grade um, grade bands and um, just kind of that um, need for um, in, in that grade level, you know, just that interaction with the teacher, making sure that all those students have the ability to be uh, to hear the teacher well and also be heard uh, in those classroom interactions. And that's something that, you know, the, the G2 link seemed to you know, do a good job at. And when we first evaluated the system, we were we we're seeing that, you know, that it, uh, the teachers that we piloted. Um, with a classroom audio device, they really had a lot of good feedback about, um, you know, the students participated better and, and things like that. So, you know, we were looking at it first at, uh, from that perspective, just enhancing the technology in the classroom and, and further expanding uh, the tools the teachers have to, um, you know, to um, do instruction well and, and make that easier on them. But um, we also, you know, have kind of in our on our roadmap uh, to really start to um, modernize some of the infrastructure of the schools, like the paging systems, and um, and not just modernize it, not just make it a you know a digital version of the same system, but like uh, like Todd mentioned, you know integrate that into other systems so that it's more uh, ubiquitous. Uh, something that you know a teacher could page the office. Uh, easily uh, or call an emergency line or something like that. Um, so we definitely want to 
look at that, but you know, we're not necessarily at that moment to really dive in uh, completely. So that's something that you know we saw with the G2 link is that we could start as that foundation of putting in the, the uh, classroom audio units and then that provides that you know uh, foundation to build on and to start to put in uh, maybe the, the more connected services, the, the paging systems, emergency and notification systems later on. So it's kind of an, an incremental process that you're that you're you're on. And Todd, mm -hmm. is that something that you think is um, you know a, a good example of that, or do you see more people just kind of going jumping all in? No, it's it's a perfect example because ideally we're all working within the realm of budgets. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's we're in an inflationary time of things, and it's a challenge out there. And we need to be prudent with the you know, financial stewardship of uh, you know district money and funding. Um, ideally, we see, um, you know, some overhaul that they'll do a, a full scale implementation. And those are, you know, traditionally, um, you know, some larger districts that have had some planning to get some funding that have really, you know, kind of you know, based something. But ideally, um, it's more common to see uh, what are the needs? How do we fulfill those pain points now? And then what does the future roadmap look like? Um, the really nice, uh, you know, solution um, that we can offer is that we can, again, get our foot in the door. Um, and like Brent had stated, we don't want to just be a digital version of the analog system. We want to have the ability to be flexible for what are the needs now? What pain points do we solve? You know, for him, it was uh, audio in the classroom and to, you know, have that ability for the teachers to you know, bring that element to, um, you know, their teaching. And then what is the next step? How can you easily integrate that in and make SIP calls and intercom, you know, two-way paging using that same system and incorporating that into the next layer and the next layer and adding in paging and bell and clocks and visual communication and alerts and all sorts of other elements that we, we offer. But long-winded answer to your question is no, that's a common, you know, um, you know, kind of uh, element that we're seeing is that we're working within the context of what is the budget now? How do we go and fulfill that pain point with some of our products? And then what does it look like on the roadmap to build out? Now, ideally, we, we love everyone to buy them all in one lump sum at every single purchase. Absolutely. But in the reality, the great portion um, is going to be, you know, uh, you know, really buying uh, incrementally, uh, depending on the budget and then adding in. And the really um, nice uh, part of G2 is that we have that ability to, you know, scale and be flexible, work within the budgets. Um, and not only are we advantageously priced to begin with, you know, understanding the education market, but we really have that availability to, to be flexible um, within the product lines that we offer to meet those pain points and then be able to, you know, continue to grow, um, you know, with the district's needs. Yeah, but talk a little bit about the uh, the timeline and how long has, um, you know, I mentioned an incremental process. Give us kind of a, you know, a step by step to where you started, where you are and to where you are now. Well, we we just have uh, completed the installation of all the systems uh, at the beginning of this school year. So we worked, worked hard over the summer um, with the team at G2, the installation team to get those uh, in place and get them for the start of the school year. So it's kind of a relatively you know, new uh, implementation for us. But in terms of um, you know, finding the money for it and going through, I mean, is that something that you had to go to the approval of the school board or uh, you know, talk a little bit about kind of like the precursor up to the, to the point of implementation, I assume there was some, yeah. some legwork involved with that, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, of course we, um, incorporated uh, this into some of our planning for the ESSER funds that we uh, had done. Of course, as part of that, um, you know, we surveyed um, in, in the community and we had some open meetings. Um, and so uh, the idea of doing classroom audio actually came from uh, some, some of the board members. Um, and so just kind of different uh, stakeholders um, kind of brought this into uh, kind of our our focus, and uh, so that's where we kind of jumped on it and started working toward that. And so I worked uh, closely with our Esther director, and she uh, helped. You know, we helped work this into the budget, and and you know, 
we we were kind of went back and forth looking at different options and and as Todd mentioned you know G2 is is a uh, kind of a lot of value for the uh, you know for what you you know what you're getting in in the classroom audio system so you know we were going back and forth about looking at what grade bands this could cover and what what are those areas that we really want it to uh, to to um, you know work for us and so that's uh, you know that was the great thing. Um, when we came back, we were originally just going to do K, uh, K3, and uh, because it came in considerably uh, less expensive than uh, some of the other options, you know, we were able to expand it out to um, and cover all the way up through fourth grade. Um, so yeah, Todd, can, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, so, so Todd, you know, the, along with the pandemic, there's also been this unprecedented amount of federal funding. Uh, that has been uh, promised to districts uh, throughout the country. It can be very complicated, very layered about what monies are allowed to use for for what systems. Um, can you talk a little bit about that and if some of the possibilities? I mean, you know, uh, Fred's talking about his ESRA funding. Is that something that these sort of technologies fall under? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, there's there was ESRA one, two, and now we're in three. Um, different elements and components to those as far as where they're supposed to be spent and how. Um, again, another really nice aspect of G2 is that we cover the gamut with a lot of the solutions that we have that fall within the ranks of unified communication, safety uh, communications, um, you know, instructional uh, technology. So there's different buckets of funding sources that are out there. Like he said, they used ESSER for, you know, the classroom audio. Um, you can also use ESSER for security type applications as well that would probably fall within visual alerts or uh, some of our communicator platform uh, solutions. There's E-rate uh, funding that could be tied into infrastructure networking and, you know, some of that, you know, kind of wireless component of things that tie into, um, you know, some of our product offerings. So for us, we really try to, um, you know, work with, uh, you know, our dealer channel and the end user and find out. Um, you know, what kind of funding is available, how we can go and help appropriate that funding within, you know, the product orientation that we can offer. And like I said before, we could be sold as a single um, line item or product, or we can be part of the solution. So is that funding part of a solution? Does that, you know, derive into, you know, having a full complete classroom that includes security and the instructional side, or is it just instructional, you know, funding? Um, and then we do have elements, um, you know, to our product line as well, which are operational. Um, so there are, you know, reoccurring uh, type applications of some of the software suite products that we have. So again, different funding sources. Um, we can work within the ranks of trying to help, um, you know, the districts and our channel uh, find those sources. And we work a lot of the time since we're sold through the channel. Um, you know, having uh, some of their resources at our fingertips as well to be able to help districts like Brent's, you know, find that. And districts are, are very resourceful nowadays, uh, as Brent knows, and just in general, where they eat, may have people specific for those projects, um, you know, to go out there and find that funding, or, you know, they can, you know, figure out uh, together as an organization and really, you know, go to market on how do we get this funding and then go to the board and, and you know, be able to you know, appropriate it and utilize it properly. Um, you know, we're definitely willing to help, but again, to talk about our system as a whole, being part of an ecosystem and having a couple different facets, uh, which we call uh, interact, communicate, and secure, different funding streams that are available uh, for us to help, uh, you know, inevitably the end user procure the product from. Yeah. So great. A couple of questions are starting to come in for the audience, which I think is great. Uh, first, I guess, Todd, for you, for you I mean, just asking about, um, the region you're covered. Uh, we have somebody in, in the Southern California area uh, that uh, are looking or thinking about a PA system or a, a certain setup. I mean, are there any restrictions in the US? Nope, no, we are actually an international company, but you know, nationally focused, we're based uh, here in the United States. Uh, we have a headquarter that's outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, we have an office that runs sales and marketing in the Jacksonville, Florida region. Uh, we have an office uh, in Denver, Colorado, uh, just outside. And then I'm actually sitting in our Phoenix, uh, Arizona office as well. So 
we have national coverage in the United States. We have uh, outside representation and we have a full dealer channel as well um, throughout all 50 states. Great. And Brent, a question for you. And it was a good segue into my own question I was going to have, but you know, how has the response been so far in terms of using it? I guess you're a couple of weeks, at least a couple of weeks in here now. And yeah. uh, maybe, and I was going to ask, I mean, talk about the day-to-day -day experience of a teacher and students in the use of the link. Yeah. Um, so our, our teachers have been very positive about uh, the, you know, the link in the classroom and just, um, you know, one, one of the feedback or common feedback that I've got from teachers is just that their voice is just not as exhausted at the end of the day. And of course, to be in a, former teacher myself, I, you know, definitely understand that, you know, you, you get to the end of the week and you're just like, gosh, <laughs> you know, I didn't realize, um, you know, just how much you talk in a day. And, yeah. um, and so they just, you know, that was a common, um, you know, theme in the feedback and others, you know, that it's just so much easier to get the class back together after, you know, they break out and they do an activity in groups or they're, you know, they're working independently, however that may be in the class, but then the teacher needs to bring everybody back together for that focus in the front of the classroom. And that's just much easier with a with a classroom audio system. Um, and so, uh, yeah, it's been very positive. Um, another, you know, piece of the system is that lanyard microphone um, you know it's just easy for them to just put on in the morning the battery lasts all day long so they're just you know easy to easy to go throughout the day and not really think about it um, and just wear it and it's just there it's just all the time on and um, it just benefits the students because of that you know if it was something where they would have to constantly you know turn it back on or pair it or you know I just don't think that that would be practical for the teacher I think it because it's that all day always on uh, type of setup, it, it just makes sense. And it just, it's it's great because they can just turn it on and, and go with it for the day. Um, so, but yeah, it's, it's been very positive feedback from the teachers. And it's not something that involves much professional development, I would think, uh, in terms of the use of it. You know, um, this has been one of our lightest uh, <laughs> professional development, you know, um, launches that we've done. So, you know, we, I basically, I made a little, a quick video, um, you know, I just showed them like, here's the microphone, this button does this, this one does that, you know, it basically just how to turn it on and, um, you know, told them about, you know, putting it about a few inches from your chin and you're good to go. And everybody just kind of took off and, and started running with it. So. It's How about from the from the student side? Any any student feedback or uh, you know uh, in, in you terms know, of behaviors, change behaviors? Well, um, I've not heard any direct feedback from students, but uh, you know some of the feedback that teachers have said is you know if if they were not to you know turn it on or whatever when they were first kind of getting in the groove of using it, you know the the students would say, hey, uh, you know turn on the the sound. <laughs> so, so they like good. it. Yeah, they like it. Yeah, they they want it. So. So uh, Todd, can you talk a little bit about the other elements of, you know, beyond the lanyard about how the, the, the classroom setup is involved in terms of the, the, the technology? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a bunch of different options that we offer. Um, you know, as far as uh, the link system, since we're talking about that, um, we sell them as bundles. Uh, we sell the amplification, the teacher mic, a student mic, um, four speakers. You could do two speakers, you could do wall speakers. Uh, lots of configuration. I'll say it over and over again. You'll probably be sick of the word scalability, but that is a key element. Um, another thing that he had stated before that I just want to mention is that there was limited professional development because one of the premise of our organization as a whole is really ease of use. Because if it's not easy to use, it's harder to implement. And if you have long rollouts of professional development needed for any of the products, a lot of the time you're gonna lose the buy-in and really any new initiative, you really have to have a buy-in. You've got you know, different um, you know, eras of, of teaching capability that are accustomed to you know, uh, different facets of how they've, they've you know, taught over the years. And you wanna make sure that everyone's on board um, and buys in very quickly. Um, so ease of use is definitely a key element. Uh, Brent is using the link system now um, you know, as the speakers in, uh, you know, installed in the ceiling and they've got their, you know, amplifier, they can plug in all sorts of different, obviously, multimedia applications. So you can run YouTube and computer, uh, do the, you know, voice amplification for the teacher. 
um, there. But you can also, to the next phase, when we're talking about implementing into other solutions, that same microphone that he was referring to the teachers wear has a, a couple patents uh, associated, which you had mentioned in your opening, um, where that technology can be utilized to that next layer of safety and security, where you can start to do two-way paging and SIP calls and uh, other um, you know, single button type lockdown uh, application. So it's a powerful element that they're using now in that, again, voice amplification um, to really have distributed audio that then when they start to you know, move into that next layer that they can just start to program those buttons. Again, very limited professional development because that would be on the back end on the interface where you'd configure it. The professional development would be hold this button for six seconds and then it will do a lockdown or a call or whatever it may be. And it's all completely customizable and configurable to what you want that to be. So whatever that would be, if you want it to uh, also uh, use, you can plug a USB in and you can use that as a presentation device as well and scroll through you know, PowerPoints and other things directly from that same microphone he was referring to. So lots of power within the system, lots of scale, um, lots of flexibility that they can use. And like I said, we won't say unlimited configurations, but you've got a, a, a pretty powerful solution and lots of inputs and outputs. Um, you have the ability or availability to have PoE on that uh, amplifier that they have or just you know a power source. So um, it's wired and wirelessly uh, networkable. So it gives you, again, uh, all sorts of flexibility to be utilized. And then when you start to want uh, that next layer to implement whatever, um, you know, mass communication, mass notification, uh, safety and security and the visual side, all those elements can be added in uh, and future proof that solution. And then the same thing, very easy to uh, do the professional development rollout because completely customizable. And all you would do is just go in, uh, program that interface to whatever the needs were and how they wanted to use it. Again, six seconds here, whatever they may be, um, that could be uh, configured um, you know, with our dealer channel, with our uh, you know, technician team, and then obviously with the needs of what uh, Brent and the school district uh, would want that rollout to look like. Yeah, and just to add on to what you know, Todd was saying about the you know, scalability of the device. Um, you know, of course, we implemented it as just a audio device, but one of the teachers had reached out to me uh, just you know a couple of weeks ago, actually, and is that saying you know she was looking to buy a, a speaker for her classroom? You know, because her Promethean board had built-in speakers, wasn't quite loud enough. You know, and wasn't a good experience, and so I said, actually, your <laughs> G2 Link um, has the capability to, to uh, plug in with USB to your computer, and so one of our technicians went out, and we, you know, helped her get that set up, so, you know, um, it's great to kind of be like that base platform, and, you know, we can kind of continue to add in pieces of the classroom uh, to it, so it's great. And it's, it's great having that come from the, from the educators themselves, too, right? I mean, that just shows what a a true innovation it can be when the, the user themselves are coming up with ideas. Yep. Mm -hmm. But could, uh, Brent, can you talk a little bit about your other current um, security and communication systems? I mean, not, not in, in, in particular detail, but I mean, I assume that there are other systems in place to communicate with parents uh, and, and students outside. Talk a little bit about your current configuration that way. Yeah, uh, so we do have like a mass uh, notification system, school messenger, we use that um, for text and, you know, actual audio calls and emails. Um, we also, you know, um, have, of course, you know, video surveillance systems as a, a security, you know, side of things um, and door access systems. Um, so those are, you know, uh, kind of separate, you know, systems. And that's something I'd like to see us moving forward is to try to integrate these separate systems, um, you know, to where it's not where it's the school's principal, if an emergency happens, that they have to, you know, go to school messenger and send that, that alert home, you know, check this to see where the, you know, if somebody was, you know, in the school, where did that person enter the school, you know, checking security systems or, you know, door access systems, looking up the logs and seeing, you know, who's accessed and what. Um, so I'd like to try to work toward a more integrated system. Um, and, and that's something, you know, maybe I've not really 
myself looked into the G2 Secure. I'm, I didn't, not aware of that prior to this, but you know, that's maybe something I could, you know, that might be a solution. I don't know if I might have more to say there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Todd, you talk about that. I mean, I, I kind of see it almost as like, you know, the, the Star Trek effect uh, mm -hmm. of getting all of these legacy systems together to where you're in this true sort of, and you can use the, the, the phrase of artificial intelligence, but you know, when, when, when all these things are tied together and maybe there's a message coming out from the classroom that there's a, an emergency and, and, it, and it, it, it gets into all these different systems and gets to the, the different, passes different protocols. I mean, that's the ultimate goal, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we have a lot of these solutions, not all. We're not a, you know, access control company. We don't do the video surveillance per se. Um, we have a pretty robust ecosystem. Our ecosystem currently now uh, consists of, um, you know, interactive flat panels that can be integrated into having the ability to activate an app um, and then, you know, kind of tie into um, what he was talking about as far as secure visual alerts uh, to send out messages. We can do daily announcements. We can do, uh, you know, some of the things like his system does as far as mass communication, general announcement. Um, you know, applications. Um, we have a system called Communicator as well, which is really a robust paging bell, clock, intercom. Um, there's cameras that can be involved. So if you had, um, you know, one of our IP endpoint uh, solutions on a classroom wall that would act as a two-way communication device uh, as an IP speaker and endpoint, it would act as a clock. It would be your bell and paging uh, system. It would give you mm -hmm. scrolling alerts to do full lockdown. And it would also have uh, flashes on it so they could have different color LEDs depending, is it a shelter in place? Is it a lockdown? Is it a weather alert? Uh, to give you that visual and audible um, you know, redundancy. And it would also have the availability to have an option too with one with a camera that you could do actually live incident streaming if there was some sort of event, again, as a active shooter or lockdown or whatever. Um, so you could do that if that was something that was part of the protocol of the school, the district and the state, you know, if that was allowed. Uh, so we have, again, lots of options that could, you know, grow into that system that he just has a link, but then that link could easily be, uh, you know, interfaced in with a lot of the other solutions. Um, and that's part of, again, the flexibility of what we have but to really talk about that as a whole, I think ultimately everyone would like to see just a single pane of glass where they've got one solution that manages all of the you know, entities that they have. We are uh, you know, an open API, so we can be integrated in with other third-party solutions. There's so many different options that are out there and we really wanna be the best and the thought leader in that interact, communicate and secure space. But we know there's other elements. We know that there's, you know, shock detection and vape detection and bully detection and cameras and all these different elements that will all be part of this ecosystem. So we do have the availability to be integrated into those solutions as well. Some redundancy as well is probably not a bad thing. You know, you want to make sure that there is some overlap to if a system does fail in whatever capacity, that there's something else, you know, catching that because security is a key element. It's in its infancy. We would like to uh, obviously continue to move that uh, you know, ball forward. And we're going to do it with our you know, best foot forward and what we're doing. And again, that interact, communicate and secure. But there's lots of other companies out there that have their specialty. And we want to make sure that we are you know, interconnecting and be part of, the, again, the solution and not part of the problem. Uh, we don't want to have that as a closed loop you know, uh, entity and just say, you have to buy our stuff. We want to be you know, working within the district and working within some of these other partners out there and what they do well and making sure that all of our equipment you know, integrates in and is the final solution that a district like Brent's is really looking for. You know, to connect all those, to simplify that, to have that robust you know, ecosystem and have the availability to easily manage it too and not have seven different things that they've got to go in and all these different logins and, you know, all the other aspects that could be contained in that. So that's that's one of our goals too, as an organization to make sure that we're, again, easy to use, not only just the equipment and the PV side that we talked about earlier, but just as a whole, as a manufacturer and working with other partners and understanding, you know, what does that element look like in ed educational technology, both on the instructional side 
and safety and security that's out there. Yeah. Brent, maybe talk a little bit about um, the administrator side uh, and maybe the, the tools in your experience so far with Link uh, of, you know, do you have a dashboard or is there, a, are there elements that you have or do you even need in terms of the management of different classrooms? Uh, no, as it is right now, it's they're, they're very, I guess, it's independent systems. We don't have anything to, as far as like uh, a single controller or something like that. Um, but I, ha I am familiar with, you know, accessing the devices to, you know, make any um, fine tune adjustments or anything like that. But, you know, out of the box, everything was pretty well set up and good to go as far as using it as a classroom audio device. I know, of course, as um, you know, Todd was mentioned before that there's more functionality. And I think that's where the, um, you know, setting up each individual device, you would be more involved in, in uh, you know, accessing the device. But, um, you know, these devices are all, um, you know, PoE uh, powered and, you know, network devices. So, you know, when we get to that point, um, you know, we're planned it in such a way that it'll be where I can remotely access all of those rather than having to go out to the classroom and, you know, plug up USB cable and sit down at the laptop or whatever. So um, I think it'll be very manageable um, and, and easy to, to work with as we continue to scale up and, and get into a more, you know, involved system. Right. So Todd, it sounds like the systems themselves are self-contained when they're in the classroom, but as you add functionality, and I assume as if, if you add uh, classrooms and uh, you know expand across the campus, that there may be some uh, management aspects, a, you know, a, a dashboard of sorts for the for the tech director. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that becomes uh, the next element when we get into our communicator platform, which is really the kind of mothership behind uh, our Bell Paging Intercom. Uh, security platform all kind of reside within that, uh, you know, web-based or on-prem, um, you know, application. And that is really where most of the major uh, tweaks would occur. So that uh, link system would then interface in with the, the communicator uh, backend. And that's where you can really, again, scale the system. Uh, that runs all of that, uh, you know, bell paging, communication, intercom, uh, aspect, and then we have obviously all the hardware that's uh, necessary to, you know, be those endpoints to communicate or to hear or to visually see. Um, but that's the, you know, the, basically the interface that would uh, integrate in with Link. So Link has its own, you know, uh, graphical user interface that you know Brent is referring to that he knows how to do, you know, the volume controls and other stuff when necessary. They come. Uh, as a kind of standard, uh, you know, out of the box configuration. But again, you can change different elements to those because there are so many inputs, outputs and uh, different things that you can add. But the real integration would become part of that communicator where you'd integrate that in and then you would set, what is that communication? Can you do a SIP call from the microphone? Can you do a one button lockdown? And those are all different elements that then would become programmed into that, uh, you know, portion depending on the functionality. You don't need to use all of them either. If you only wanted to use, you know, certain portions, um, mm -hmm. you know, depending on what they are, you could start to add, you know, different elements. If you didn't want the visual component or the, uh, you know, general announcements, or uh, we have a, a, an app called the Activator app that has a chat that can do real time uh, communication with, you know, outside emergency, uh, you know, communicators. Um, you know, you don't need that, but, you know, obviously those are all options that can easily be integrated in. Um, they can be integrated in by a dealer channel and the installation groups that are there. Um, and our team can, you know, help with that as well to facilitate, but ultimately it can also be managed, uh, you know, by the end user on, on-prem as well. Um, so lots of different options that are there and, like I say, scalability, that's really the key element of our company. Our organization wants to have these, they could be standalone, um, but as you wanna to start to you know, add different technologies and then implement them into one streamlined solution, um, we have those elements to be able to uh, you know, start to uh, purchase and implement pretty seamlessly. Speaking of scalability, Brent, uh, any advice for any of the folks who might be listening uh, to the webinar right now about 
who haven't started at all, who, who maybe need to take that first step into uh, to, into an audio system. Maybe they're being pressed to find new security solutions, new audio solutions, new, you know, ac across a, a spectrum. What advice would you give to them in terms of what they should do to kind of get their their ducks in a row? Yeah. Um, you know, I definitely would start with just talking with teachers, talking about the idea of audio system in the classroom. You know, we started out with piloting it with just, uh, you know, a handful of teachers and just kind of getting their initial feedback, um, just seeing how that goes. And, and, you know, in our case, it was, you know, all great feedback. So, you know, we, you know, it wasn't any hesitation as far as moving forward with it. But, you know, um, I think you know, in our experience, we found it more practical in those lower grades and with the teachers that we um, piloted it with. And, you know, so that helped us in making those initial steps of where do we want to focus this in, in the you know beginning, but then, you know, have in mind that we're going to continue to, um, to move forward with expanding it out in more grade levels as we, as, as time goes on. So. Yeah, it, it doesn't seem like it should be a novel idea, but uh, teacher buy-in uh, is something I think historically when it comes to implementing technology sometimes gets uh, looked overlooked, right, Todd? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. It's about return on investment when it comes down to it. So who are the stakeholders and are they going to use it? Uh, it it's great if you buy technology and say, here you go, uh, we bought you the latest and greatest, but if it's not being utilized and utilized properly, um, you know, what is the benefit to it? Um, so that's, again, part of the ease of use and part of the, uh, you know, flexibility within solutions that you want to make sure that you start with the teachers and stakeholders that have that, uh, you know, uh, buy-in from that, and then you can kind of grow from there. Um, you know, part of, uh, you know, the, the, the whole you know, audio, um, a lot of the times was overlooked because, again, you get that, you know, visual presence of a projector or document camera or, or that kind of, um, you know, wow factor that you can see. But the audible, you know, portion just in general is obviously a key element that is uh, imperative in the, you know, the educational uh, setting. So once you get that in pilot, I think that's a great way to go about technology in general, um, you know, get that buy-in. And then, you know, you kind of get the people Downstreaming word of mouth is always a great way. Um, obviously, we've got Brent here using our stuff and kind of you know being an advocate. But word of mouth, just in general, internally of you know uh, what were uh, the positives and negatives and getting feedback um, and you know being able to grow and again scalability, being able to add that in. What's the next element? And then you know pilot something here and say, oh, this was great. We were able to utilize this um, and then you know grow, grow, grow. Our systems are meant to be sold district wide, where you can actually manage it from a district um, perspective to a school, to a zone, to a classroom, to a student uh, or teacher. So, again, really uh, have the ability to uh, understand how you can formulate the entire ecosystem as a large you know, rollout or a small rollout, but it all starts from who are the end user, who are the stakeholders, who are really going to utilize this. And what are the best benefits and solutions that you know really fit their needs, and then be able to kind of grow from there. Yeah, and I would add, you know, just um, kind of helping teachers realize the need for a classroom audio system. Um, you know, I think a lot of teachers, and I probably would have, you know, fallen into this category as well. I, I'm pretty loud when I talk, and you know, everybody can hear me you know, fine, but. Um, you know, it's one of those things when you experience it, it, it kind of, you know, you see the need for it, you see how it really helps and you can kind of um, compare this to like an assistive technology in, in one way, where it's not necessarily a, a have to, you know, like you may not have any hearing impaired students that need a uh, amplification, but, you know, doesn't it still help those other students even even though, you know, like I, you know, a lot of times would use a magnifier on my computer to help, you know, blow up a part of a worksheet or something like that, that I was showing digitally on my projector. And, you know, it just, it, it just helps. And then also I found, you know, when I, my students knew about that, some of them would use it, you know, I mean, it just helps to be aware of those. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's only for 
people with uh, disabilities that can only use assistive technology. Anybody can use it if they need it, you know, so. Absolutely. And there's funding tied to that as well. I mean, accessibility is, is, is another huge kind of thing I've, I found that's come out of the pandemic here that people are just aware of the need for various things, even if it's maybe not defined as a, as a disability, but even when you talk about ADHD or just being able to focus and, you know, all those sort of things. Uh, in, Todd, we we're talking about, uh, you know, the, the need for teacher buy-in. Another kind of pandemic effect that I've noticed is the realization that there's uh, a wider community, including parents uh, and including uh, administrators uh, that want to now be involved in the conversations, especially, unfortunately, when it comes to safety and security, right? Uh, Very much. Talk, a, talk a little bit about that and how maybe that has evolved the way uh, you implement systems and, and work with districts. Yeah. So I had a uh, meeting yesterday and the meeting uh, was going smoothly and we we're talking about our solutions and it was with uh, one of our uh, dealer partners and uh, one of the questions came up saying, you know, do you sell on fear? And I said, no, we sell against it because what we're trying to do is be preemptive and then work within the community now to help uh, understand that we are part again of the solution where we are um, you know, one of those uh, partners that can help um, with that security element. And a lot of that is now community, you know, driven because the parents want to know that when they're sending their students, you know, to school, that they have the safest environment possible. Um, and, you know, obviously part of our, you know, uh, solutions are really based on that element of uh, community. As I just mentioned a minute ago, starting at the district and then going to a school, then going to a uh, you know, classroom, then going to a student, that also in reverse then goes to you know, uh, emergency responders, to parents, to whoever you know, the uh, districts and schools um, you know, add into that element of having the availability to have every parent have that app on their phone. And then if there is something, instantaneously they can get that information and they'll know um, you know, just from, you know, going through our app that, you know, every student's accounted for, they're safe, this, the door's locked down and the school's locked down. Um, so that is a, a key part of that now moving forward. Obviously, uh, the pandemic made it very apparent that, you know, now we're all in this together in the essence that before it was maybe a little hands off. And, you know, safety and security is a, a key driving factor uh, across the board as we see crime rates are up, uh, you know, unfortunately, in almost all major cities and even down to rural areas. I mean, Brent says he lives in those and it's unfortunate, but it's the reality. And, you know, what can we do to, again, help be part of that solution is helping to have these robust elements that are, uh, again, affordable to be able to be implemented, uh, easy to use, and, you know, part of that community decision where they wanna go in and have that flexibility that every parent um, you know, gets that chance to know if there is something happening in real time, um, you know, via an app, via, um, you know, some other communication text or a phone call. Um, those are all elements that, you know, could be, again, implemented and scaled into the system, um, you know, where it could even be from what, you know, one of Brent's teachers on that link system that's not implemented now, but they get into getting communicator into their, you know, district and then do a call that could then, you know, activate into, you know, the app and then send that out. So lots of, uh, you know, different elements, but again, they circle back to having that buy-in. So that comes from the board, that comes from, you know, obviously uh, senior officials within the district uh, choosing the right solution. Um, the, the one thing about our solution is um, that it really is part of, you know, the ecosystem. We tie in everything seamlessly. So our interactive flat panels can, you know, manage those type of, you know, visual applications that become either just daily announcements or emergency communication, uh, be it, you know, lockdown or shooter or weather. Um, you know, the same thing with the, uh, the mobile phone, the same thing with the, you know, G2 link, the same thing with the bell, you know, bell paging and, uh, same thing with our phone systems that integrate in. So again, the theme is yes, we need the buy-in not only from the you know educational instructional side to make sure that that is an element that's moving um, you know uh, education forward, 
but also that we get the buy-in from the community because we're helping with the safety and security, um, you know, within that school and district. Yeah. And as a parent, um, I want to have something that's official, right? I don't want to have to rely upon Twitter as my platform, of, especially in, in case of emergency. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. It, it's something that's specifically derived towards that application, uh, you know, so that, that's definitely part of it. I mean, safety and security is not a laughing matter, uh, never has been, but, you know, especially nowadays, I mean, we're hyper-focused on making sure that everything is, uh, you know, seamless and we're as secure as possible. And that's really, again, another key element of our business model is to make sure all these are tied in, easy to use and powerful. Right. I knew one of the toughest parts of uh, my job this afternoon would be to end the conversation. Uh, there's, there's so many different elements of, of this technology and the impact that it has on schools. We could go on for quite a while, but we are coming close to the top of the hour here. So kind of leaves me with some of my, my wrap up questions. And Brent, I mean, and we've already spoken about this before. And as you say, you're, you're, you're at stage one, you're using Link, you have the audio, but you have thoughts about uh, what you want to do next. I mean, what, what's on your wish list in terms of, is it a, the yeah. scalability that Todd was talking about? Is it to make everybody audio enabled or is it to go maybe towards another feature and function such as security? Talk a little bit about what, if, yeah. if all things being equal, uh, and you had unlimited funds, uh, what you would do. Yeah, um, definitely looking toward replacing and updating our intercom systems. We've got a lot of very old centrally located analog, um, you know, old top where they go flip the little button up, up front in the office and, <laughs> you know, pages of the classroom and you always hear this buzzing sound and <laughs> just not a really great experience. And, um, you know, just the reliability because of the age of the devices, we're starting to see that kind of go downhill. So it's really put that onto my radar. And, um, you know, that was one of the things when we first looked at the G2 link is the SIP capa uh, uh, capability. And so, you know, my mind immediately went to thinking about our newly upgraded phone system. We recently went to a SIP based phone system. So I'm thinking, all right, you know, let's make these two connect together and, and utilize that for paging and, and, and those sorts of things. So ultimately, that's where I want to go. I know, um, you know, I talked, I spoke with, um, you know, um, Mark um, was our, um, you know, sales rep that I worked with during the initial purchase. And, uh, you know, we, we talked a little bit about like the paging and a bell system, uh, you know, like centralized servers. So definitely be kind of looking at that and thinking about how to put those pieces together to build out a really, um, you know, robust uh, messaging system within the schools to help um, help them, you know, a, have a very reliable, good system to reach all the areas of the school in an emergency situation, but also just streamline that communication. And I think we, we've got a lot of that there with the link, with the G2 link, because of, you know, that lanyard, being able to just press the button, you page the office. Uh, I think the teachers would really like that functionality. Um, and as I understand it, you know, I think there's also some um, add-on, you know, um, like a button for like the you know, uh, on the wall where a student could press it and page the office if they needed to. Um, so, you know, we're, we're looking at those pieces to put together a, an intercom system um, to just, like I said, modernize and, and get the best of the newer technologies and still have the, the functions that our teachers are used to um, in a, the traditional, you know, intercom type system. Right, because when you get, to, get down to it, I mean, you're still talking about hard, hardwire, right? Yeah, when, when it comes to that. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Todd, I'll leave you with the, with the last word here. I mean, uh, maybe you can look into your crystal ball a little bit and look look out over the next you know three to five years as we kind of come out of the pandemic and we, we have these fundings and we also have this kind of understanding for the need for technologies like these. I don't think there's much um, much resistance anymore, at least from from my corners of the world, of anyone thinking that, you know, we shouldn't have these sort of technologies in schools. Talk talk about where you're hopeful, and I hope it's hopeful. I'm sure it is, glass half full, about you know where we're going in the next steps. So, as we've seen education evolve, obviously the transition from analog to digital uh, that was initial conversion of 
um, you know, implementing projectors. And that used to be media specialists that managed uh, that technology and would check them out on carts and TVs and projectors and, um, you know, overhead projectors that evolved to digital cameras that evolved to, you know, projectors that started to touch the network that then became the responsibility of IT directors. Mm -hmm. um, and so all of that being said, we're starting to see the evolution now within the communication of being a more advanced. Uh, PA systems are really uh, uh, kind of the element of analog you know, thought process. And they were managed by facilities and buildings and grounds. And you know, a lot of the times that, that was like where common spaces or cafeteria that falls under this element. They're all starting to meld again back into kind of the IT you know, bucket because everything touches the network or it's on a virtual server or it's housed in the cloud. Um, and our, you know, that's the bulk of what we do is either an on-prem server or being in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, that is really a focus of, um, you know, the next three to five years in education is evolving that communication, those paging bell, clock, intercom, having them be in one, uh, you know, area that can be managed easily, um, you know, changes and in intuitive type, um, you know, interfaces that have that ability. So for us, I mean, a lot of the emphasis is really uh, moving within the ranks of tying A, our, you know, flat panels that we manufacture, our classroom audio, um, all into this, again, ecosystem of communication and communication being both visual and audible, not only, again, on premise to replace those antiquated systems, but also to be part of, uh, you know, again, the community as a whole. So everyone has that ability to digitally interface, either be it, you know, cell phone or uh, audio or computer or device um, and, you know, have that, um, you know, flexibility to, to maybe even, uh, again, get our foot in the door with an antiquated uh, analog system to just get the digital platform, use the speakers. And then when they have that ability to maybe put IP speakers in, then refresh those. Um, because ultimately, the more connectivity that we have as, you know, IP, uh, we can manage those from our, you know, internal map and show what's online and what's off and, um, you know, build out a really robust uh, solution across the board. So mm -hmm. the, the, the key element for us is, again, continuing to move the needle on, you know, both uh, visual and audible communication throughout, you know, schools and districts both on the instructional side and on the, you know, uh, security and emergency operation, you know, kind of usage side. Yeah. Well, great. I'd like to thank our presenters today for a very informative presentation. I see our time is about up here. Uh, and I'd like to thank the audience members uh, for joining us as well. As a reminder, you'll get an email within the next few days that contains a link to this recording along with the slides. Thanks again for participating and have a great day. Brent, Todd, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks.